Next we go to filter beds. Filter bed for a rapid sand filter. Each unit of the filter bed has a surface of about 80 to 90 meters square. As we saw that the surfaces are rather large and look at this number 80 to 90 meters square is a huge number. The sand is a filtering medium here also. Effective size of the sand particles is between 0.4 to 0.7 mm. There we saw in the slow sand filter it was 0.2 to 0.3 and here it is 0.4 to 0.7 mm. So therefore the diameter of the sand is large and hence the filtration is faster. The depth of the sand bed is usually about 1 meter that was about the same in the slow sand filter. Below the sand bed there is a layer of graded gravel 30 to 40 centimeters deep about the same as that of the slow sand filter. The gravel supports the sand bed and permits the filtered water to move freely towards the under drains. The under drains at the bottom of the filter beds collect the filter water. So basically this box, this filter box of the rapid sand filter is almost the same as that of the slow sand filter. One notable difference that you will see is the size of the sand. The size of the sand in the slow sand filter is larger so that water flows more freely and it was much smaller in the slow sand filter therefore the water flowed much slowly. The rate of filtration in the rapid sand filter is very fast. It is 5 to 15 meter cube per meter square per hour. So this is much faster than the slow sand filter. Coming to the process of filtration. As filtration proceeds the alum flock not removed by the sediment is held back at the top of the filter. Beginning to sound like the zoological layer formation? Yes. This alum flock layer that is above the sand filter is akin to the biological layer or the zoological layer of the slow sand filter. Although you must remember that there is a great deal of difference between those two. The true biological layer in the slow sand filter did a lot of works. This layer is not expected to do those many functions but is definitely a barrier for bacteria. Like I said it forms a slimy layer comparable to the zoological layer in the slow sand filter. It absorbs bacteria from water and thus helps in purification. Oxidation of ammonia also takes place during the passage through the filters. So we don't want ammonia in our drinking waters obviously. This ammonia is oxidized and therefore it is removed from the water. Okay we are happy we got the purified water. The last step is back washing. Back washing is just cleaning of the rapid sand filter. How do we do it? Rapid sand filters need frequent washing daily or weekly depending upon the loss of head. Again compare and contrast to the slow sand filters which required cleaning once in months maybe. So the cleaning frequency was much less. Once you start the slow sand filter there was really nothing much to do about it. It more or less operated on its own. As far as a rapid sand filter the operation have to be done almost daily or weekly. So it is a daily exercise cleaning of the filter. Washing is accomplished by reversing the flow of water through the sand bed hence the name back washing. So here what we do is for cleaning we reverse the flow of water the water goes back dislodges all the impurities towards the top and the filter is cleared. Back washing dislodges the impurities and cleans up the sand bed. Water was flowing downwards now the water is flowing upwards and thus the filter gets cleared. That is what is back washing and that is how we clean the rapid sand filter. Remember slow sand filter cleaning was done by scraping. In the rapid sand filter we are cleaning by a process called as back washing. Advantages of the rapid sand filter. The rapid sand filter can deal with raw water directly. No preliminary storage is needed. Filter bed occupies less space. So the filter bed of the rapid sand filter was very small. Filtration is rapid 40 to 50 times that of a slow sand filter. So the filtration rate is rapid and therefore its name rapid sand filter. The washing of the filter is easy. We just need to do back washing and there is more flexibility in operation. What were the disadvantages? It was costly to, uh, to build. 
skilled manpower is required to operate as opposed to slow sand filter anybody can operate and the cleaning is required on a daily basis so these are the disadvantages of the rapid sand filter coming to the most important topic in water purification chlorination chlorination for all practical purposes is all that you should know about disinfection in water most of the questions that would be coming from this topic would be somewhere or the other related to chlorination so let us start with chlorination chlorination kills all pathogenic bacteria that is a very good thing but it does not kill as you saw spores it does not kill many viruses so that was the limitation also it is not that effective against ova and cyst so no action on spores and certain viruses like polio and viral hepatitis except at high concentrations chlorine also oxidizes iron manganese and hydrogen sulfide that is a miscellaneous action destroys some taste and odor producing constituents and also controls algae and slime organisms chlorination also aids in coagulation so you have basically a long list of functions which chlorine does apart from just killing bacteria so chlorine aids coagulation controls algae controls slime destroys taste and odor oxidizes iron manganese and other substances so these are the lot of benefits chlorine has plus one of the most important benefits we discussed in the last lecture was residual chlorine or residual effect of chlorine that was protection against subsequent contamination that was pretty unique very few agents have something called as residual protection and chlorine of all these advantages also has that wonderful advantage of residual protection hence because of all these we use chlorine the most frequently action of chlorine chlorine forms hydrochloric acid and hypochlorous acid hydrochloric acid i hope everybody knows is hcl and hypochlorous acid hydrochloric acid neutralizes the alkalinity of the water that is good for me why we saw that if the water is alkaline chlorine does not work so the ph of the water must be very close to the neutral ph the ph of the water should be close to 7 for chlorine to work so if the water is alkaline this chlorine is not going to work so this hcl which is forming reduces the alkalinity of the water and thus itself helps in chlorination hypochlorous acid ionizes to form hydrogen ions and hypochlorite ions now these end products are not wanted because they are very less efficient what we want is hypochlorous acid you see this chemical reaction on your slides h2o plus cl2 gives you hcl plus hocl i want this hypochlorous acid the second reaction that you see here hocl breaks down into h ion and ocl this is not wanted because these these products are not that great in disinfection of water what i want is that maximum of the products should remain with hocl and remember hydrochloric acid helps that so i have a synergy here i have two things forming and the one helping the other i have a hypochlorous acid i have a hypochloric acid hypo hypochlorous acid is a very good disinfecting medium and the hydrochloric acid reduces the alkalinity and helps hypochlorous acid the disinfecting action of chlorine is mainly due to the action of hypochlorous acid and very small extent due to the hypochlorite ions hypochlorous acid is basically 70 to 80 times more effective than the hypochlorite ion so again i want hypochlorous acid this is many a times asked and is liable to be asked again what is the product you want in the chlorine reaction that is the most significant and the answer would be hypochlorous acid chlorine acts as best disinfectant when the ph is at about 7 because there is a predominance of hypochlorous acid so if it is asked what is the active agent in the chlorine reaction of water again hypochlorous acid hydrochloric acid what is the function of hydrochloric acid in the reaction hydrochloric acid simply reduces the ph towards 7 so that hypochlorous acid gets to act so those are two important mcqs in that section coming on to the next principles of chlorination again you are fortunate that you don't have to write a theory paper otherwise you will have to mug them up 
line by line for us what we need to know is you need to just know the principles of chlorination what they are why they are important and their applications so you don't have to learn them by heart but you will have to know what these principles are let us start the water to be chlorinated should be clear and free from turbidity for chlorination obviously if you give a greater organic load chlorine would not be very effective because the demand the chlorine demand of water would be very very high let us now spend some time and look at what the chlorine demand of water is to put it really really simply i will draw a very basic schematic diagram and we will try to explain the chlorine demand of water this is a ball of water and you have a for again simplification purposes let us consider the effect only on bacteria so you have this five bacteria and i have a chlorine here when this chlorine is added to the water this chlorine goes to this bacteria and it destroys it so if i have five bacteria in water i need five chlorine guys to destroy all these five bacteria when all these five bacteria are destroyed the water is completely disinfected so i needed five chlorine for destroying these five bacteria therefore that becomes the chlorine demand of the water so the amount of chlorine required to disinfect the water completely is the chlorine demand of water i can really mess it up i can say a level at which free residual chlorine starts appearing in the water that is the chlorine demand of water and i won't be wrong what will happen is when this chlorine has destroyed all the bacteria in water after that if i continue to add chlorine what is going to happen the chlorine has got nothing to react now everything is gone okay everything is destroyed chlorine has disinfected the whole water if i add more water what is going to happen is simply free chlorine will rise in the water and that free chlorine is called as that free chlorine is called as residual chlorine that free chlorine is called as residual chlorine and as you know this was the important property we were talking about so i can also say chlorine demand is the amount of chlorine which is after which free chlorine starts appearing in the water that free chlorine will go towards the residual chlorine of the water so that is basically the second principle chlorine demand of the water should be estimated and we will see how the chlorine demand of the water is estimated contact period i told you already three or four times should be one hour don't forget contact period of one hour that is a given the contact period for chlorination should be one hour free residual chlorine should be 0.5 mg per liter after one hour that was also an important number i had written it on the board and i will write it again free residual chlorine should be 0.5 mg per liter at the end of contact period of 1 hour sum of the chlorine demand plus free residual chlorine that is 0.5 mg per liter is the correct dose to be applied for those who have followed this it will immediately make sense this amount 0.5 mg per liter should be the level of the residual chlorine and plus chlorine demand say the chlorine demand for example hypothetically we will take an example was 1 mg per liter so the correct dose of chlorine to be applied to the water is the equation is going vertical now will be 1.5 mg per liter so the correct dose of chlorine to be applied would be 1.5 mg per liter this is an example you get me when is the amount of chlorine i need to destroy everything in water plus i want the level of 0.5 mg i add them both and i get the correct dose of chlorine to be applied these are the principles of chlorination if you understand this they are very easy but they will put a lot of questions and they are really simple so don't miss this 
methods of chlorination coming to actually how do we chlorinate we chlorinate by using the chlorine gas you have chloramines and we have perchloron what is the best first things first the best is chlorine gas okay so if, if a question is asked how do you chlorinate why do you chlorinate or something of chlorination chlorine gas if, if there is an option chlorine gas yes that would be the right one chlorine gas let us start with this it is cheap it is quick in action and it is very easy to apply it applies itself i don't have to do a lot of things there just release the chlorine gas and my work is done so chlorine gas is very easy to apply it is cheap and it is very quick in action but the problem is it is not oxygen it is irritant chlorine is highly irritant if you have ever dived into the swimming pool with your eyes open you know what i'm talking about your eyes simply burn you get redness and you feel very comfortable when the water goes into your nostrils and your ears you get that burning stinging sensation in your nose that sensation is the sensation of chlorine so therefore chlorine is an irritant gas and therefore i cannot just go down and open a chlorine cylinder into a water i want a specialized equipment for that that equipment is then called as patterson's chloronome patterson's chloronome is a huge cylinder and the associated machinery that you see that is colored blue and kept at the side of the swimming pool that is patterson's chloronome it is used for chlorination of the water so patterson's chloronome is one such device for measuring regulating and administering gaseous chlorine to the water break point chlorination break point chlorination after a stage residual chlorine begins to appear in the water this point at which the residual chlorine appears and all combined chlorines are completely destroyed is called as a break point chlorination now this is too technical yes it is just remember we already discussed this five cl destroyed this five bacteria okay when that is done that is break point chlorination so if you don't if you don't want to bother a lot about technicality just remember when everything in the water is destroyed all that has to be destroyed is destroyed and now afterwards free chlorine starts appearing that point that level is called as break point chlorination so when we discussed that these five cl went and fought with these five bacteria and they destroyed them okay good water is now disinfected that level is called as break point chlorination afterwards we added free chlorine and the residual chlorine appeared so that level is called as break point chlorination important terminology is simple marks break point chlorination achieves the same result as super chlorination in a rational manner and therefore is also sometimes called as controlled super chlorination controlled super chlorination what now is this super chlorination super chlorination is a method of chlorination we use particularly where we are not very sure about the water quality sometimes the water quality is very good sometimes the water quality is really really bad this happens to even us you open the tap and sometimes the water that is coming out of the tap is literally muddy so you have a river you have other water body wherein you are not sure about the quality of the water what is used is super chlorination super chlorination means not estimating the exact amount of chlorine that is needed adding a lot of chlorine so that is what super chlorinating the water a lot of chlorine into the water and then removing the excess chlorine after the demand of the water is met so after the chlorine demand of the water is met the excess chlorine that is left we remove it that is called as super chlorination so break point chlorination does the same thing but in a rational manner say for example you need 25 grams of bleaching powder for example for break point chlorination for super chlorination you would be using 50 gram so it rationalizes and break point chlorination gives us the same effect as super chlorination but at a lower level because we don't add excess of chlorine and then take out the remaining chlorine we just give the adequate dose of chlorine what is needed